My name is Nicholas with Play on Tabletop, and we're going to be learning how to make practical effects for miniatures to give your miniatures that extra something. Ever since we released our video showcasing the Gene Studio Cults versus the Ultramarines last year, we've been getting more than a few questions on how we do the effects. And we just want to take this time to uh, look at it and look at how we created it and how to paint them. To be honest, it's not that hard to make them look good. It's actually surprisingly easy. Things like the shield effects here. I understand not everybody likes these kind of add-ons and stuff like that, but personally for me, games like Warhammer are all about the shared narrative between you and the other player. And anything that makes the board feel more immersive is a big win in my books. I just feel like the board really comes alive and when you're looking at the models, it feels more like you're looking at a snapshot of a real battle than anything else. To get the first questions out of the way, most of these effects were 3D printed uh, by myself here in my garage. I have a Prusa FDM printer and I'm printing with transparent PLA plastic that I've been able to get good results with because I have a well-tuned machine. Uh, of course, if you don't have a printer, well, it's gonna be a little bit harder to do these effects. However, all the prints that I'm going to show you today are available to be purchased fully printed already as well. All of these designs were produced by a company called Deadly Print Studios, which in my personal opinion, I feel like is some doing some of the better effects type designs out there. You can purchase their designs directly from them and there is a link in the description below and you can actually order prints ready to go if you don't have a printer. Now today I'm gonna to show you how we made a blast like this one, like a big gun blast coming out, as well as gun blasts like this. These are very versatile, can go on any kind of model. Um, you can uh, put them on a regular gun, a small like, shotgun, or it works good, uh, printed a bit bigger, to, uh, to make machine guns. I'm also gonna show you how to make this, uh, this kind of dust plume in the back. It's all actually really easy, but I'm just gonna show you how we did it, and uh, hopefully you can follow along. All right, we're gonna start with the Ridge Runner, and I'm gonna be using an airbrush for this, and I'm gonna be starting with some yellow, Vallejo yellow. Now you can use any paintbrush instead of a airbrush. I just find it a lot easier to get a smooth fade from one color to the next. So I'm adding some uh, flow improver, and I'm just a couple drops of yellow. And uh, so what I'm aiming to do is I'm trying to get the glow effects. I'm starting with some paint to get the glow effects underneath the, where the gun blasts are gonna go. And just a little bit, I'm just gonna be really gentle here, not too much, um, spraying a bit farther away to make sure that uh, I'm not putting too much paint on the model at once. And just give me, trying to give it a nice even flow. Just little quick taps. And there we go. It's a little bit clumpy at this point, but don't worry because it's gonna be covered up by the gun blast. So now we're gonna move on to some white uh, using Vallejo white again, a couple drops and a little bit of flow improver. And I'm just gonna go right in the center of that yellow to try to give it where the, the, the hottest uh, of the flame from the gun burst are gonna be. Just in the center, trying to give it some even fade and don't wanna overspray, be very careful not to overspray. And just a little bit there and there we go. I'm really happy with that. That looks like a, a fade from white to white to yellow there and that's gonna be a really great base for where to put our gun blasts. Okay, now let's work on the gun blasts themselves. Uh, this is usually how they come out of the printer. I've printed several at once here, and they've got a lot of supports on them. That's uh, pieces of plastic that were printed to keep it from falling over during the printer. And most of the supports can be taken off with your hand, just like that, but a, a pair of pliers or scissors are some, sometimes gonna be needed to get off the excess. And so right here, I'm just gonna be really careful not to take off too much and I'm just going to take off the excess. I'm really happy with that. I'm, however, I'm going to use a knife here to just mold it a little more, make, give it a bit more of a point, uh, it just, just to get rid of any anything that may have not went perfectly in the printer, just to give it a bit more of a point. All right, next, because we're using this on this specific model, I want to create a really flat base for it to go right up against the gun barrel. So I'm just going to chop the end off just a little bit to give it a really flat base rather than the rounded that comes in the print. And then next, I'm going to take off two of the little flame bursts at the bottom, just give it a flat bottom to lay down on, otherwise it'll fall off the model. And there we go, we got one, and then let's do the next one. Again, just cutting really gently off the bottom, not too hard, uh, don't go too hard, otherwise you might destroy the model, but just cut off those bottom two pieces and it should lay flatly. And there we go. Uh, that's gonna look really cool. 
Now let's paint them. It's honestly not that hard. I'm going to use a yellow again, and I'm going to use my airbrush again. Again, you can use this with a paintbrush, but I find it just a lot easier to get a nice even fade with the airbrush. It just takes longer with a paintbrush. And I'm going to start by going at the very bottom and just where it's hottest there, adding some yellow, um, making sure not to overspray and getting it near the end of it, just on, just on the part that's going to be touching the gun barrel closest. And I'm just going to add some yellow there and leave it a bit of a highlight. Now I'm going to take a paintbrush and I'm going to add some orange here. And I'm going to take uh, a lot of it. Now, lots of people say to thin your paints here. In all honesty, here, you can glob it on. And I'm just going to go on the edges of those lines, those big ridges there. And I'm just going to glob a lot of paint on the edges of it. And I don't want to go too far into it. I'm just trying to grab the, the raised edges of the fins there almost. And I'm just going to put it all over there and reach it all the way, almost all the way to the point. Let, let the point be white just to give that clear to shine through. You don't want too much paint on this because if there's too much paint, the transparency nature of the PLA will be lost and some of the cool effects will be gone. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next step. I'm going to use some Evil Sun Scarlet by Citadel Paint. It's just a red color. So I'm just going to use a little bit less than I did of the orange and I'm just going to touch the very raised bits again. Um, just not too far in don't want to cover all of the orange but just a little bit of the race highlights it just gives it that fade from yellow to orange to red to really make it seem like it's firing and there we go i'm really happy with that two gun blasts ready to go ba -ba 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 -ba. and i'm just going to attach it onto the ridge racer with super glue if you are concerned about transporting this, uh, you could try putting magnets in them instead so they come off easily. But I find that I don't do a lot of transporting with my miniatures, so I'm going to be fine for them just to be glued on. And just a little bit of super glue onto the end, and voila! And there we go. The whole process took about 15 minutes to do, and it was super simple. And now we have a very cool cinematic looking model. Okay, let's move on to the dust bloom coming up from behind. This is leftover material from Christmas at a dollar store and I found some fake snow in a bag and I bought a whole bunch of it and just tore a piece off of it and it works perfectly for smoke, especially after you've painted it of course. So we're going to again use an airbrush, although I've had really good success with spray cans or even a paintbrush to get that. So I'm going to start with some black just to get that smoky feel because this is kind of a bit of smoke and dust coming out of the back. If you've ever noticed I've driven like an ATV through dirt or something like that, all the smoke from the exhaust and the dirt all kind of mixes together. I'm also making sure not to put too much color on it. I want a bit of the white to show through and I don't want it to be too heavy. So now I'm going to move on to some brown. And again, I don't want to cover up all the white spots. And I kind of want to skirt the edges of the black so that I don't cover up too much of the black too. So it works great to blend with the black. And then lastly, I'm just going to go over it again with a little bit more black just to bring in those edges a bit and blend it a little bit more. Just some super glue on the end or white glue and tap it down. Uh, I'm going to squish it just a little bit here because I don't want it hanging too far off the model. And once the glue is attached, I'm going to take the edge of it and just peel off a little bit and just pull it apart just to give it a bit more spread and make it seem a little bit less harsh from nothing to smoke. And there we go. That, in my opinion, is a very cinematic looking model as it races across the battlefield to machine gun down the enemy. <laughs> All right, let's move on to one of my favorite models, the Broadside Battlesuit. I'm really excited to add some effects to this guy. I just love the feeling of him holding this big gun and blasting things across the tabletop. So I'm gonna be using Deadly Print Studio's Complex Blast. It's a two-part model that has a blast and the bullet portion coming out of the blast. This is gonna look pretty cool. <laughs> So I'm just going to take my cutters and my knife and just shape these pieces a bit. Sometimes when they come out of the printer, they have little dangly bits still hanging on. And I just really want it to be a bit finer of a line on those. And then next, we're going to go on to painting. I'm going to start with some light sea blue from Vallejo. And I'm just going to get the edge with my airbrush. Again, you could use a paintbrush for this, uh, but I'm just using my airbrush for the speed and the blend it gives me. And I want to make sure I don't get the center where the white part is. I want to leave some of the transparency there and not cover it all completely. And I just want a nice fade from blue to white. The white is of course the hottest part of the explosion. And we're using blue because it's Tau and all Tau guns are blue. Didn't you know that? And I'm going to get the back side here. Just don't forget that part. And just a little bit on the edges again. Make sure you don't go too far in. 
And there we go, some nice fading from blue to white, and that will work great. And now I'm gonna move on to the bullet portion or the plasma portion, whatever you wanna feel like this rail, rail gun is shooting. In my mind, it's kind of like a mix of an energy slash physical object. And so I'm just gonna get the tail edge of that bullet and make it blue, and I want it to be able to streak back white. And then we're just gonna use some super glue to glue it on. Again, you could use a magnet if you're concerned about transport. But again, I don't do a lot of transporting of my models, so I'm just gonna put it right there. And we're done. Boom. So one last thought on effects. It's important when you're looking to do these kind of effects that you approach it with a plan. Uh, a few effects can be cool and tell a story, but too many can both be arduous to produce and feel out of place and unrealistic. In a battle, for instance, not every gun is gonna be going off at the same time. You're gonna have this guy firing and this guy firing, but not this guy. Also think about how the effects tell the story. For this guy, I really wanted a sense of speed. Uh, gunning the engine, blasting away full tilt, and a lot of little things went into that. From the askewed angle I put the model on the base, to how much smoke was coming out the back. For this model, I wanted you to feel the gun was firing a massive shot. So I used a very large gun effect and tried to use the details in the base and pose to communicate the recoil, such as the ice cracking here on his feet. It can be such a fun way to add life to your battles. Please tell us your stories. What kind of stories are you gonna be telling with your armies? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and until the next time we see ya, play on.